Hello, truth seekers, and welcome back to our channel, where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. All right now, folks, buckle up, because we're about to dive into some royal tea that's hotter than a British cuppa left in the microwave for way too long. It's your favorite neighbor critic here, coming at you live with a spicy take on the latest shenanigans in the House of Windsor. Grab your popcorn, because this tea is piping hot. But before we delve into further discussion, if you haven't subscribed, I mean, come on guys, what are you waiting for? Hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell ASAP. So now our boy Harry, you know, the ginger prince who used to be everyone's favorite party animal turned dutiful royal, is back at it again with his legal shenanigans, but this time, Daddy Dearest King Charles is putting his foot down faster than you can say, God save the queen. Let's rewind a bit, shall we? Our dear Prince Harry, bless his heart, decided a few years back that the glitz and glamour of royal life just wasn't cutting it anymore. So what does he do? He grabs his Hollywood actress wife Meghan, packs up baby Archie, and jets off to the land of green smoothies and paparazzi, good old California. Now you'd think after all the drama, the tell-all interviews, and the Netflix docuseries that spilled more tea than the Boston Tea Party, Harry would be content living his best life in his Montecito mansion. But no. Our prince seems to have a serious case of you can't have your cake and eat it too syndrome. Here's the kicker. Harry's throwing a royal tantrum because he wants top-notch security when he pops back to the UK. And not just any security, we're talking taxpayer-funded fit-for-a-king level protection. The audacity, right? It's like moving out of your parents' house but still expecting them to do your laundry and cook your meals. But here's where it gets juicy. Harry thought he could bat his puppy dog eyes at dear old dad, King Charles, and get him to pull some strings. Oh honey, that ship has sailed, capsized, and sunk to the bottom of the English Channel. Sources close to the palace. And let's be real, these sources could be anyone from the royal gardener to the queen's favorite corgi, are saying that Charles isn't having any of it. It's like he's channeling his inner Simon Cowell and giving Harry's plea a big fat, it's a no from me, dog. Can you blame Charles, though? The man's trying to run a monarchy here. He's got bigger fish to fry, like figuring out how to make those big hat things. What are they called again? Oh, right, crowns. Look cool and not like something you'd find in a medieval costume shop. But let's talk about the real puppet master behind this whole security circus, Meghan Markle. Now, I'm not saying she's pulling all the strings, but wink, wink, come on. We've all seen how this plays out. One minute Harry's knocking back pints with his army buddies, the next he's sipping oat milk lattes and talking about his journey. Coincidence? I think not. Megan, darling, we see you. We see your master plan. First, it was, we want privacy. Then it was book deals and Netflix shows, and now it's, pretty please give us back our royal perks. It's like watching a really long, really expensive episode of Keeping Up with the Sussexes. But here's the thing, folks. The home office... You know, those stuffy government types who probably haven't updated their wardrobe since the 80s. They're not buying what Harry's selling. They took one look at his puppy dog eyes and platinum American Express card and said, Nah, mate, you're on your own. And can we talk about the audacity of it all? Harry's out here acting like he's still a full-time royal, expecting the red carpet treatment whenever he decides to grace the UK with his presence. Honey, you can't have your crumpet and eat it too. It's like he forgot about all those interviews where he threw his entire family under the double-decker bus. You can't go on international television, spill all the royal secrets, then expect everyone to welcome you back with. Night. Open arms and a security detail. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Now, I'm not saying Harry doesn't deserve to feel safe. Of course he does. We all do. But there's a difference between feeling safe and expecting the whole of Britain to foot the bill for your personal bodyguards. Maybe try pepper spray and a really loud whistle like the rest of us commoners, Harry. And let's not forget, this isn't just about Harry. Oh no, this is about setting a precedent. If Harry gets his way, what's next? Will Prince Andrew demand a security detail for his trips to Pizza Express? Will Fergie insist on protection for her next book signing? Where does it end? But the real kicker in all of this? Harry genuinely thought his dad could wave his royal scepter and make it all better. Oh, sweet summer child. Charles might be king, but even he can't override the entire British government system. It's not like he can just say off with their heads to anyone who disagrees with him. This isn't Game of Thrones, Harry. The palace sources, again, could be anyone from the royal chef to that guy who winds up the clocks in Buckingham Palace are basically saying, sorry, Harry, daddy can't help you with this one. It's like when you're a kid and you ask your dad for something and he tells you to ask your mom, knowing full well she's going to say no. Classic dad move, Charles. But let's be real for a second. This whole situation is sad. It's like watching a family feud play out on the world stage. 
Remember when Harry was just the cheeky spare, always good for a laugh and a scandal that was more endearing than shocking? Now he's like that relative we all have who moved away and comes back at holidays with a chip on their shoulder and a list of complaints longer than the queue for the loo at Glastonbury. And poor Charles. The man waited his entire life to be king, and now instead of focusing on important monarchical duties like waving and cutting ribbons, what do they actually do all day, he's dealing with his son's security drama. It's like he finally got the keys to the kingdom only to find out the kingdom is actually a very posh, very dysfunctional daycare. But you know what? Maybe this is the wake-up call Harry needs. Sometimes you've got to hit rock bottom before you can climb back up. And if rock bottom is having to slum it with regular security like some kind of peasant, then so be it. Who knows, maybe he'll discover he actually likes living like a normal person. He might even learn how to use a self-checkout machine at Tesco. In all seriousness though, this whole debacle is a reminder that even the royals, with all their tiaras and titles, are just people. Flawed, complicated, sometimes ridiculous people. They've got family drama, they make mistakes, and sometimes they ask for things they probably shouldn't. So what's the moral of this royal story? Maybe it's that you can't have your royal cake and eat it too. Or perhaps it's that family drama is universal, whether you live in a castle or a council flat. Or maybe, just maybe, it's that we should all be grateful we don't have to fight legal battles just to visit our hometowns. Whatever the lesson, one thing's for sure, this royal saga is far from over. So grab your popcorn, settle in, and get ready for the next episode of The Real House Guards of Windsor. Will Harry back down? Will Charles cave in? Will Meghan write a children's book about it? Only time will tell, my friends. Only time will tell. And remember, in the grand scheme of things, we're all just trying to make our way in this crazy world. Some of us just happen to do it with a tiara on our head and the weight of a thousand years of monarchy on our shoulders. So let's cut Harry some slack some, but also maybe remind him that actions have consequences, even if you're sixth in line to the throne. Until then, stay tuned for more shocking stories and scandalous exposés on our YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest from the world of the royal family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.